Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from AzureAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our test project course. And today we are going to be discussing about working with C Sharp .NET Core SDK's add-ons. So in our previous videos we discussed how to run the test with C Sharp .NET Core and we also created a test and also we uploaded that within test project portal and we also saw how we can run the test both in local machine as well as within the test projects portal which was kind of cool and now community has started asking about how that we can create an add-on in test project in c -sharp .NET core the way that we created in our java project so we are going to be discussing about that in this particular video we discuss add-on of test project with java sdk but here we will discuss with c -sharp .NET core sdk to leverage the same power of add-ons of test project and once again the prerequisite of the add-on creation is going to be pretty much same like how we did before you can have visual studio 2017 or above so recently visual studio 2019 released so if you have visual studio 2019 community edition you can still go with that and dotnet core 2.1 or above support so dotnet core latest version has been released as well you can have that as well within your machine and then latest version of test project agent so there was a new agent released yesterday on 0 0.52 so if you have that latest version you can use that which is going to be awesome because there are so many new features within that particular test project agent as well so here is the complete workflow of what we are going to be discussing in this particular video all we are going to be doing is this we are going to be using the test project SDK to write the add-ons in C sharp pretty much exactly how we did in our previous video and then we are going to be testing the add-on within our local machine using the test agent that we have installed by connecting the test agent with the test project using the developer key and things of that nature and then we are going to get the add-on manifest from the test project because as you know in our previous videos while we discussed while creating the add-ons in java you need to download the manifest file which is mostly like a GUID, and it has some details of the permission that you are invoking while using this particular add-on something like environment or file system or something like that so if you select those options while creating an add-on it is going to create a specific manifest file for those permissions and then you need to get the particular manifest file zip it along with your DLL file and then you need to upload that within the test project portal so that's the most important thing guys it's not something that we discussed in our previous videos while creating that test the add-on is going to be a little different you need to have a manifest file zip it up and then you need to upload that within the add-ons of the test project and finally you can use the add-ons in much easier fashion in any step by selecting the add-ons that you have created within your own project so it's really cool because you can see that the steps itself is very very easy the creation of add-ons is much easier and the most important thing is if you are using a java project and if you are still going to use this particular dotnet add-on within that particular project you can still use that that easy it is so you can see that test project is going to take all the heavy lifting for us and it's going to be working seamlessly with two different languages regardless of how we are going to be using them and finally there is one more important thing which has been introduced recently in test project is the element type so when you upload the add-ons you can also mention for which element type the add-on applies to instead of you guessing it to work with the control or not during its usage and this also reduces a lot of confusion because if you can see that today you're uploading an add-on and you are writing the add-ons for a text box and let's say two or six months down the line you feel like that particular add-on can also be used for an the rich text box and the add-on is not going to be working for the rich text box of course it makes sense because you cannot use that if you don't have the particular option within your add-on so while uploading the add-on if you specify which are the controls this particular add-on is going to be used for then only for those controls this particular add-on is going to be applicable and you cannot be using this particular add-on for any other control and even it own shows this particular option if you're going to be using it for different controls which is really really cool that's the element type guys we'll be discussing about that while we try to upload our add-on within the test projects portal so let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work so for that i'm gonna flip to my visual studio 2019 right now all right as you can see i have my visual studio 2019 and this is an all new 
Visual Studio from Microsoft released a couple of weeks before and I'm going to be using this particular Visual Studio 2019. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a .NET Core project which is going to be used for creating our add-ons. So I'm just going to be going over here. As you can see it also shows me the recent project template that I have used. So I have used the class library .NET Core project which is very very handy. I don't even have to search that. So I'm going to be selecting that. So make sure that you select the class library of .NET Core project and then hit next and it's asked for the project name. So I'm going to call this as clear text text box add-on and I'm going to hit create. There you go. So I'll make the text a little bigger so that you can see it more clearly. All right. And in the dependency, as you can see, we have this particular uh, dependency for the .NET Core. So I can directly right click, go to the Manage NuGet package, and I can go to the Browse, and I can search for Test Project, as you know how we did in our previous video. So I'm just going to select this particular Test Project SDK, and you can see the version this time is going to be 0.52.8, which is going to be the latest version of SDK released on May 24, and I guess today is May 25. It's released yesterday. Right, so I'm just going to be installing that, and you can see that once you install that, it is going to be installing the beta version of Appium Web Driver as well, and that's the latest version of beta driver of Appium, which is really cool. And you can see that the installation has been completed successfully. Right, so I'm just going to close this guy, and you can see that the installation is done. So you can see there is a class file, probably I'm going to uh, get rid of that. And you can see that the installation is done. If you go to the NuGet, you can see the test project SDK is available for us right now. And you can see it also has the test project common, which is used for many other purposes that we'll be using in this particular uh, video demo. So I'm just going to create a new folder this time. I'm going to add this as, uh, call this as add-ons. You don't really have to have this, but it's a good practice followed by test project team. So I'm just going to be using that. And then I'm going to create a new class here and I'm going to call this particular class as clear text box or maybe clear text and I'm going to hit add because this is not going to be applicable only for the text box. You can use it for any other purpose as well if you want to extend that in future. This particular clear text as you know is going to be an add-on so you can see that I can make this class as public and not to mention this particular class for performing an action in the add-on you're going to call the action attribute of the C-sharp and you can see that it's going to be using the test project common dot attributes, right? So now the common comes in picture and within this particular action, you can specify the named parameter as name and the name is going to be the clear text and then you can also specify the description if you want. So the description is like clears text from the text box, something like that, of uh, web UI. So this way, this particular text that you are specifying here is going to appear within your step of the test project while you will be using that, right? So this is the uh, description and this is the name of this particular add-on that we have specified. So in order to make use of this particular class, we need to implement an interface here, which is nothing but the web element action and you can see that it's going to bring you the using test project or sdk or add-ons or element action and once you inherit that it shows you the screw line which is basically that you need to implement the interface with these particular methods which is nothing but the execute method if you remember the same execute method that we have discussed in our previous videos and we have also used the same in our java project as well right so i'm just going to be calling the var driver as the helper dot driver you'll understand why i'm actually calling this particular driver property right now and then i'm just going to do an element dot clear that's it so basically this is the method that we are about to call to clear the elements text right so whatever element that you're going to pass in for this particular add-on it's going to clear the text for it very, very simple 
very very super simple guys it's not even harder or even close to harder it's so simple that you can write this particular add-on in much easier fashion and the idea and the concept of creating this kind of add-ons is really really cool by the test project team so I'm just going to return the execution result as passed because you need to return that. That's what this particular uh, execute method actually expects. So you need to return that as well. So I'm just going to save that. So our add-on has been created. That's it. So this is the only thing that we need to do for creating an add-on, by the way, within our code. So the next thing is, as a tester, we have to make sure that this particular add-on is actually running fine or not. So in order for that to be done, we need to do two things, guys. As you know, in our previous video, we have already discussed about that. The first thing is we need to consume this particular add-on and we need to see how this particular code actually runs. So basically, I need to consume this particular add-on. So for doing that, I'm just going to right-click, hit Add, create a class, clear text uh, base. So this is kind of a convention which is used by the test project team to uh, call the add-on and use that. So I'm just going to be using the exact same convention here. I'm just going to call this as public class clear text base. And within that, we need to have only one static method, which is going to be the run action method. So the run action method basically has the runner and this particular runner as you can see is coming from the test project SDK as well. This runner basically expects us to get the clear text class. So I'm just going to call the new clear text class. Oops. Not the base clear text. So from here. And then I'm just going to be navigating to my any one of the application and then I'm going to be using it. So basically for this demonstration purpose, I'm going to be going to the execute automation demo site. So you can just type like execute automation uh, demo site, something like that. So you can see it brings you up this particular execute automation demo site in the Google. You can just search that. Uh, so this is the website I'm going to be uh, automating this time. So I'm going to be entering the username and password and then I need to clear the password text that I have entered. So for clearing this particular text, I'm going to be using our add-on and then I'm going to see how this particular add-on actually behaves the clear operation. That's it. So for doing that, I'm just going to be using this website, guys. So I will not be writing the code for this. I'm just going to be copy pasting some of the code that I have already written over here. So you can see that we are missing the driver. So for the driver, actually, you can get it from the runner, something like this. So I'll just implement, get the driver. All right, remove the unnecessary usings. So you can see that uh, this is the driver that we have got from the runner. And then this is the website. This is the username and password that I will be sending in. But now we need to call the clear text add-on. So for doing that, we have this runner dot run method. So this particular run method is responsible for performing the action of calling our action, which is nothing but this guy to perform an action. So basically if you call this particular action, it is going to clear the text. But as you know, for our add on to perform an action, we need to have the element. So in order to call this particular element, we need to pass this particular element within this clear text itself. So in order for that to be done, I need to call a by of selenium dot, I'm going to say name as password. So basically, this is going to be clearing the text for password control. So this is basically for my test in order to run this in my local machine. I am clearing the password field, but if you want to do that in the test project by using this particular add-on, you can do it for any control of that matter, right? This is just for our demonstration purpose. I'm actually using for the password control. So I'm just going to be saving this guy. And finally, in order to see this in our UI, I'm just going to add a thread dot sleep. You don't understand what I mean. Of let's say 3000. Just in order to see how it actually works. So this is the one which is going to be clearing the text for us 
this is the code which is going to be doing that but where are we really calling this particular run action or the clear text base class to perform this action and that's when as we discussed in our previous video we are going to be doing the creation of our test project or we can also create within here but I prefer to have creation of a new project which is going to be a dotnet test project which is the dotnet core project so I'm just going to be selecting that and I'm going to call this as test add-ons so within this particular guy I'm actually going to be consuming the add-on which is nothing but the clear text add-on uh, so I'm just going to add a reference so like that clear text box add-on hit OK so now we have this particular project clear text box add-ons here the reference has been done and now I need to run this and see how it works so in order for that to be done let me just get rid of this guy the setup I'm just gonna create a test fixture where I'm just gonna call the automated browser type you can see it is from the commons enum I'm gonna specify that as edge browser which is cool so you can see that edge browser is also supported by test project awesome and then I'm gonna call the runner class and then I'm gonna hit control dot to get this particular runner class so once we have this runner we can then call the runner factory instance create web method to call this particular runner and then we can call the method that we have written within this particular clear text box base which is nothing but the run action method to run this particular test within our local machine and see how it works so basically in order to do all those stuffs it takes even more time so let's discuss that in our next video thank you